This is Sam Laidlow, and he has been in front all day long. <laughs> Starting the final lap of the run, Sam Laidlow has not only preserved his gap over his closest chasers, but he's grown it by 20 seconds. Magnus is 5.50 down. Watching Magnus right now, his hips are starting to drop. Yep. He's kind of uh, loping a little bit. When you look at a more compact athlete like a Patrick Langer, like a Rini, we just saw the pass of Langa going on to the podium, third place, overtaking Rudy Von Berg there. He is used to hunting on the run course. We just saw Patrick go by. Absolutely flying, right? I mean, Rudy is not running slow. He, he's, he's not walking by any means, but that's just the speed that, that Patrick has. There's a lot of racing left to go. Leon Chevalier is holding strong in fifth, three minutes behind Rudy Von Berg. If Sam is going to come undone, this is when it will happen. The other athletes will be looking and hoping for any sign of faltering. For me, the goal was just to not blow up. I mean, the way I race is always obviously, I play my cards and swim hard, ride hard, and hope that they don't catch me up. But I had a really rough patch where I didn't know if I was even going to make it to the finish line and Patrick is coming so fast. This pass has been a long time coming and now the two-time Ironman world champion from Germany, Patrick Longa, has moved into second. I knew Patrick could like just pull out maybe a 228 or 229, you know, and uh, I knew I was on for 240, 241 and we had a 12-minute deficit. Clement Mignon, still reeling from his nutrition issues, is slipping back, barely hanging on to the top 10. And Matthew Marquardt, who was debating even starting the marathon after that ride, is now at 11th. Just behind him, 20 minutes from the front now, is Cam Worth. For that 15K, I honestly believe that I had a chance to run down, you know, at least Magnus and Rudy. I thought they'd start to struggle, and I thought I could hang in there. And, Maybe when Patrick came past, I try and respond and help pace me up there. They were all the things I was thinking about until the second that I literally had no choice but to unzip everything and drop my pants and bolt off the course. It was, um, it's amazing how quickly things can change. Now in 20th position, Jan has definitely shifted from race mode to just soaking up his very last race as a professional. Come on, big dog. <laughs> yeah, it was quite a mind shift, of course, because the whole thing is performance, and I can't tell you how many hours of physiotherapy and preparation have gone into just to get here. You know, normally the disappointment would just outweigh uh, so much of it. Yet, I found myself in a place of ease, in a place of realizing this is how the journey is going to go. I don't have any other cards to play. Closing in on the finish line, it starts to sink in for Sam Laidlow. Now, Sam Laidlow is making the dream come true. His very first Ironman win is going to earn him the world title. And there it is, the celebration for this young man as he hits the carpet. Display by the 24 year old. Eight hours, six minutes, 22 seconds on this course. It is just amazing. And you can see his pride 
for what he's accomplished today and for his family and his home country. Yeah, just overwhelmed by, by emotion and then I genuinely didn't believe it, you know, I was just like looking at my mum, looking at my girlfriend, my brother and just like, I just kept nodding this way, you know, just saying no, I, I don't believe it. It was, yeah, it was just a day, a day for the history books in France. run his way all the way to second place here is something to truly be proud of. Running the fastest marathon of the day in two hours and 32 minutes, off of that bike ride, Patrick Lange finishes runner up. It's his fourth podium finish at the World Championship, which is truly an impressive performance here today. And here he is. The young man from Denmark, third place, Magnus Dietler. It gives you goosebumps running down uh, a finish line like that, and this was for sure a very, very special one, and my first Ironman uh, World Championship podium, so that's <laughs> one for the books. Rudy von Berg capitalized on his local knowledge and aggressive racing style en route to his fourth place finish. From the spectators to the race course to the the whole race, uh, how everything was organized, uh, I think it was top notch, and uh, my performance as well. Really happy with that. And showing what a well-rounded and patient athlete he is, Leon Chevalier adds to the hometown pride and takes fifth place. It was brutal, to be honest. I was really good in um, just committing to it. You just have to go for it and uh, try and hang on. One of the most exciting things about this year's Ironman World Championship in Nice is in its first year, we had four Frenchmen in the top 10. Yeah, it was very special just to see flags, French flags, so five guys on the top 12. So yes, I think it's very good for, for the French wrestler. Making history as the first ever men's podium at the Ironman World Championship in Nice, France. Representing France, Sam Champion Sam Lalo of France. Germany's Patrick Lange and Magnus Ditlev of Denmark. And it's 14th place for Australian Cameron Worth. I'm still hanging in there by, the, by my fingertips to sort of potentially be part of that top rotation. But if I ge genuinely want to actually race those guys in the final 20K of, of the marathon, I got to make some changes and um, and just basically do the small details much better. It reminded me a little bit of the movies where you see you know, the gladiators going in for the fight. The greatest of all time, they call him. In his last dance, the Dumbledore. Then eventually he goes in for his last fight before retirement, and there's just that one line that gets to him and um, and finishes him off and. It died doing what I love. Leon Frodeno! I identify as a professional athlete. You know, this is part of who I am, and that identity somehow was put to rest. Leon Frodeno, we love you! We say chapeau! It's been special, and, um, and, and I couldn't be happier with where I am. Leon Frodeno, you are an Iron Man! I'm looking overhead now at Lucy Charles Barclay, and she continues to put time on Taylor Nib. Six minutes and seven seconds at the last gap. Meanwhile, Penny Haug has begun her charge and has passed Lisa Norton, Daniela Reef, and Laura Phillip. But right now, looking uh, very good for Annie Haug as she moves into third place. When she passed me, you know, she always looks like she's not breathing, she's not sweating, she's not hot at all, and I felt like so hot already. Laura does nothing to surge or match the pace. I had to make like a little bit of a decision, you know, trying to go with her or just sticking to my own pace, and I decided to do my thing. Nothing is a foregone conclusion. I try really to focus just on myself. 
the expression on her face, that is definitely not something you want to see in your rear view mirror coming at you. Last year, I ran maybe half of the marathon 20 seconds behind Lucy and I couldn't catch her, but you have to stay on your own pace and hope for the best. Another big mover, to no surprise, is Chelsea Sodaro. I knew the win was out of the question. I just thought, let's see if you can get through the elite drive section. She started the run in 19th and has already cracked the top 10. I started to feel a little bit better when I got up onto the Queen K. I think that I was fit, and I just wanted to try to get to the finish line. And of course, once you start picking off people, that gives you a little bit of momentum. Lucy Charles Barkley continuing to bound through this marathon course. We heard that her Achilles was bugging her a little bit, which you weren't expecting. No, I wasn't expecting that. I think about two miles. Into and when that part of your leg has something go on with it, even if you're pushing through it, at some point, it could just lock up and that's it. But when she says that, your, your heart sinks a little bit, but she seems to be holding strong. And so for me, just crossing those fingers that, you know, the best woman should win, but you'd hate to see someone that had been that close so many times be stopped uh, because of an injury like that. She's hitting the strategy to a T as we come inside the energy lab with Lucy Charles Barclay. It's actually one of my favorite parts of the course, but my main concern was with the downhill running and how my legs were gonna deal with that. Now, as we close in on the turnaround, we're gonna get to see that ever important moment when Lucy Charles Barclay in first looks across to the left and sees second place Taylor Nib. It's like poker face time. Make sure you look like you're good. I think I actually smiled at Taylor to pretend that I felt good. If you see someone looking good and they're coming fast and you know it, and um, that can make that tough section twice as tough. I think what Lucy Charles has on the brain, and it's creeping to the front, is when will I see how? Yeah. When will I see how? It's hard to explain how the energy lab feels if you've never been there. It is so hot and so desolate, and it comes at a time in the marathon that all you want to be is done and the energy lab somehow sucks the energy out of you. For some athletes, they found a way to mentally get around it and they get energy. I always say to myself, until half marathon, it shouldn't hurt at all. And then you're on top of um, energy lab and everyone says, the way you come out of energy lab decides if you win the marathon. So I think when I'm up on the highway again and have energy left, then I can push. This is the point of the race where nutrition becomes very, very important as we see Anna Haug now. She is the hunter coming up onto Taylor Nib. My team out there were like telling me I needed to fight and I'm like, like I'm not sure how much fight I have in me right now. Like, it's just like, I need to hold my pace, I need to do this and I don't know what's left. Anna Haug now from Germany knows how to get onto the podium. A third place is gonna become a second place right now. At about mile 18, coming out of the energy lab. Annie Haug makes the pass on Taylor Nib. There's only one more athlete to catch. Not a great swim for Am, kept battling on the bike, and here she has put herself into second place. My main concerns were definitely Annie and Laura because they're proven on the marathon of how well they can run, particularly Annie. When you've got someone like that behind you, I don't think you can ever relax. You're always looking over your shoulder. She's won the race. She's been uh, third in the race. Um, she's rolling, and, and it's, it's foolish to ever count her out. The difference today is that she's going up against Lucy Charles Barclay on a great, great, great day. They weren't catching her. You know, like there was Annie and Laura were making up a little bit of time, but, you know, she really was holding it together. Laura Phillip at 9.03 back with Taylor Nib at 8.55 back. So that doesn't sound good for Nib's uh, retention of the podium. Catching Taylor towards the end, of course, was also really cool. Laura put a lot of pressure on me and I, I went a little bit too much based on what I had and I just absolutely blew. I did had to dig deep, <laughs> but that's what it's all about.
Lucy Charles Barclay is coming into that final magical stretch. She is. You can hear the roar of the crowd in the finish line. You know it's coming. You can hear it. It draws you in. To make that right hand turn onto Alihi and know it was mine was just, I can't even put it into words. I guarantee you that Achilles is not bothering her right now. Lucy Charles Barkley can finally enjoy that run down Ali'i Drive, knowing she's world champion. Even though she's made it look so easy. The sound was deafening off the crowd. Like, my ears were ringing from them screaming. All I wanted was to get that tape, because every time before, the tape's already been gone. So to see it still there, I just had to grab it with both hands to be like, I've done it. This is mine. In a time of 8 hours and 24 minutes, 31 seconds, Lucy Charles Barkley of Great Britain captures the 2023 VinFast Ironman World Championship title. Quite literally, the first time we saw her break from that poker face and break from that concentration and that flow that took her to victory was on the finish line. Her wire-to-wire -wire dominance resulting in a new course record is such a fitting culmination to the historic all-women's pro race. A celebration, a ton of relief. I wouldn't have even in my wildest dreams have thought about going under the course record. That was just the icing on the cake and the most magical way to do it. And having to overcome so much adversity on that run, I had to overcome that to win it. And it really has been a challenging journey, being second four times. And then I feel like that was the most testing and challenging challenging run that I've had on the island. Anna Howe, she's done it in style. With an unreal marathon run of two hours and 48 minutes to punctuate a truly impressive race day. It's really something special to get a medal at every single Ironman World Championship race I participated in. Of course, you come here to win the race, but the second place was the best I had, and Lucy's race was just from another planet. And she's got the smile way out here. And fellow German Laura Philip is third after a gutsy fight back into contention across the bike and run. Please welcome Laura Philip! It does feel even better if you actually, yeah, uh, don't come in fourth for the third time, but just, you know, get that one spot <laughs> um, on the podium. In her first ever Ironman, Taylor Nib crosses the line in fourth place. I don't think I had very many expectations. I, I definitely wanted to make it to the finish line. I am just ready to be here. And then I was just grateful to cross the finish line and be done. And five-time Ironman world champion Daniela Reef finishes fifth in her final time racing this event. I definitely thought back to my four times where I was running there, winning that race and having the goosebumps. And I mean, this island has given me so much and this race, it really changed my life. The 2022 world champion Chelsea Sodaro is just behind Reef in sixth place. I'm probably more proud of my performance tonight and I'm of the title. That was way harder than my race last year, I and mean, I really had to fight for every single pedal stroke and every single stride. I feel like I'm kind of a real iron woman now. I accessed a new level of grittiness. We had 16 pros go under nine hours, and um, Danielle will tell you when she got second here in 2014, she went 902. And we asked her like, what has changed since then? And it's, it's sure it's technology, and sure it was like a good day, but it's also just, game recognizes game, like the whole field elevates each other. Finishing just under nine hours, Els Visser is 15th in the world. It's been a race befitting the historical significance of the day.
So if I drive this thing 150,000 miles. Battery's covered. A million miles? Yep. Whoa. For 12 years, for 4,383 sunrises, across millions of mornings, we've been working to make one thing better. This, AG1 is foundational nutrition, a science-driven formulation to support whole body, brain, and gut health with just one of these, or one of these, once a day. Welcome to foundational nutrition. Welcome to AG1. Start at drinkag1.com. Introducing the Iron Man Virtual Series. Ride the best parts of 12 of the world's most iconic races from Kona to Nice, California and beyond. There's a course to suit everyone. See how your time stack up against people in your age group. Starts November 4. Don't miss out. Available exclusively on Full Gas. Register now at fullgas.com. Malama is to cherish and protect the reefs, the fish, the birds, the winds, and the land. <laughs> Giving back, that's something that lasts generations. Learn how you can Malama Hawaii at gohawaii.com slash malama. This is an epic, action-packed, adventure-filled story of Athletic Brewing's revolutionary non-alcoholic beer and the founders behind it. I'm Bill. And I'm John. You see, this is no ordinary non-alcoholic beer. These are great-tasting brews that are fit for all times. And they all started with a crazy idea. Why can't there just be an amazing non-alcoholic beer that wouldn't affect me the next day? And one that actually tasted great? Oh, wow. That's a great idea. And there you have it. Just two totally delusional people. <laughs> The VinFast Ironman World Championship is brought to you by VinFast, boundless together. Gatorade Endurance, formulated for farther. Hawaii Tourism, Malama Hawaii. Active, powering the world's events and activities. the pro podiums decided the course belongs to the age group racers. A lot of these athletes still have hours to go on this race course and the difficulty of the conditions is reaching peak levels. For them, the true test of endurance is really only beginning. You know, when you're sitting in your living room um, and you're watching this on television, you don't realize how hard it is to run in the heat. Like even running for 20 minutes on, you know, on a Leahy driver on the Queen K, uh, at one o'clock in the afternoon is really hard. Having to get off the bike and run a multiple lap run course that's flat, yes, but because of the crowds, people will be going out of their minds. And what runners are gonna keep it together and not get carried away with the crowd? There could be some carnage. Now, the mindset is just put one foot in front of the other. Keep moving forward. You are so tired and so dehydrated and so delirious. Um, and the fastest way back is through, right? Just, just got to keep going. Uh, so it's, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty rough.
There's something special about when the sun goes down on a world championship race day. The sky lights up, and it's beautiful colors of purple and red and orange. It's kind of like the second scene. The first scene was the pros, the top of the sport, and the second scene is the every man or every person and that age grouper going out there. The shadows get longer, and it's this quiet serenity. But at the same time, it's still an epic battle out there. And people are going through journeys in their head and through their body that they maybe would never expect to go through. And that juxtaposition on a world championship race day is it's pretty special, and uh, I think it tells a story. It's digging even deeper when you're in bad form, and I was down and out, and I think, you know, that's why I love Ironman so much. I, I, I think it's the true test of training and, and diligence and just mental strength, and I, I love comebacks. It's kind of the story of a lot of my competition careers. Coming off the Queen K, down Pilani, like, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it, you know, because you know that you've you know that you've made it um, and it's it's so iconic and it's something that so many of us watched on television when we were kids so yeah there's something really special and unique but I think it's partially made from the fact that you did something really really hard and no matter where you're finishing and whether you're finishing right on where you expected to or whether you didn't meet your expectations it's always it's always a happy moment you are an When you get to the finish line, you know, you've just embarked on an experience that just creates a whole new story that no one can take away from you. And, and I love that. I love that I get to create my own legacy. When someone overcomes Ironman, you do get a sense that, that maybe more is possible for you. The Ironman motto is anything is possible, and yes, that relates to that day. You know, you could have an amazing day, you could do something you didn't think you could on that day, but that can extend through you know, the rest of your life. Once you've crossed that finish line, you know, that never changes. You've always got that. One of the most impressive things about Ironman and its world championship is it's not only the fastest and most impressive athletes on the planet, but it's the everyday age groupers are out there trying to cross that finish line as well. So by the time the pros have finished, and it's almost twice as long, some of these age groupers are out there just trying to make that cutoff. They're out there in the dark and they deal with twice as much adversity. So for me, the, the real inspiration comes from those athletes that are just simply out there doing it literally all day long. You suffer so much in 10 years, what are those remaining hours? Like it's, it's nothing in the grand scheme of things. So just go there, push, push, push. When you're out there and it's dark and you're only 10 miles in, that 17 hour cutoff can feel um, nearly impossible. You have to go inside yourself to find something special to get through a struggle that you didn't think was gonna be there. You plan for certain struggles, but then Iron Man will always throw something at you that you did not expect. And the only person that's gonna solve that problem and get you to that finish line is you.
After fighting through some pretty rough patches, Canadian chef Dale McKay savors this moment, which represents the culmination of so much personal change. It's, it's, it's just such a relief of like, think, think it's over, but knowing that you did it, just for me to be doing, you know, endurance like this and, and to have this, it's, it's given me a whole new kind of outlook on life. And I, I find I'm a just, I'm a better person. I'm calmer, I'm more generous. I think Gordon Ramsay's time, so. <laughs> Finishing the world championship in his hometown, Cyril Del Pistoia makes a resounding statement. I've not only beat cancer, I've reclaimed my life. Cyril Del Pistoia, you are an Iron Man. Iron Man gives me that push towards training, towards remaining healthy and self-disciplined commitment. That's what brings you to the start line and what brings you to the finish line. Eighteen-year-old Adrienne Bunn isn't just the youngest person to complete the 2023 VinFast Ironman World Championship. She's also one of the first known female athletes with autism to complete this race. And Yulia as a party of Kiev, Ukraine, crosses in just over 12 hours. An incredible display of determination and resilience when faced with unimaginable hurdles. All of a sudden you realize what you've accomplished. You realize what you have done throughout that day and you were closing in on the, the culmination, the completion of that dream that you have probably been working for for a very long time. I got to mile 25 of the run and there on the corner is Chris Nickish and his dad. And I say, you're a huge part of the reason that I'm here is because I saw your story last year. And he grabbed my hand and he just held it so tight and said, come on, you're okay, you go, go. Nothing, not even a Parkinson's disease diagnosis can stop Sarah Whittingham in her mission to show what is possible with self-belief and an iron will. That anything is possible. Do we really want women in one place and men in a completely different country at a completely different time? And I think yesterday really showed what can happen on every level when we give women the spotlight by themselves. If you were there, and especially if you were at both races, there was, there was no question afterwards where the women finally got the stage to themselves. It really felt like our sport took a step forward. What a magical day it has been for the VinFast Ironman World Championship, Nice, France.